14 years in prison for having spread terror in the region of Ituri, in the north of the Democratic Republic of Congo. Thomas Lubanga, who led the Union of Congolese Patriots, was found guilty by the International Criminal Court of recruiting and deploying child soldiers during a five-year-long conflict in the area. Hundreds of thousands of people died in the civil war, according to NGOs. As the three-year trial finally came to an end, the victims were welcoming the sentence given to the former warlord. We are satisfied because this is a sort of public revenge, revenge of justice, because the victims couldn't have taken revenge on their own, if you know what I mean. But there remains a very important aspect. That's the question of compensation, which will be discussed at a future hearing. This is the first sentence handed down by the International Criminal Court since it was created 10 years ago. Many NGOs are warning that Thomas Lubanga should not be the only one, that other criminals must also be convicted. Thousands of desperate civilians are fleeing from the epicenter of the fighting between heavily armed M23 rebels and Congolese government troops. There has been intense fighting between fighters loyal to renegade General Bosco Nataranda and poorly equipped government troops in the North Kivu region. Government forces have been, have been chased out rather of many strategic towns in the east of the country. For more on that, we turn to the CFI report. In eastern DR Congo, civilians are fleeing for their lives. Families with children overloaded with belongings, also stragglers from the Federal Army on the road. The rebel M23 movement, comprising mutineers from the government army, pulled out of Ruchuru after capturing the strategic town last week. <laughs> We heard shooting, so my mother told me to get our things and to run away to Goma. I have been walking since this morning. I left my brothers and sisters somewhere behind. They told me to wait for them at the barrier. They attacked yesterday morning. Then they cut the Kalangara road, so we had to flee this way. The rebels are gathering strength as UN peacekeepers attempt to protect the main civilian centers. The fighting in North Kivu is sparking fears the country could be dragged back into civil war. We will pull back when we see things are normal. We will leave the area in the hands of the MONUSCO and the National Police. They will keep it and maintain peace for the civilians there. The M23 fighters have withdrawn into the jungle of the Virunga National Park to await the response from Kinshasa to their demands. But there's no indication the government is ready to negotiate. Senegal's former ruling party has been dealt a crushing defeat at the recently concluded parliamentary polls. The Senegalese Democratic Party of former President Ward won a meager nine seats compared to 131 in the previous assembly. Despite these heat losses, PDS top brass is defiant about the future of the party. Officials are planning to remobilize the party's power base with the staging of a convention to choose what successor. We have more on that in this report. Though it has only nine deputies in the newly elected parliament, compared to 131 in the previous one, the PDS Senegalese Democratic Party is still refusing to describe the most recent elections as a total disaster. In this voting system, if your party has a majority in a department or state, you take all the seats in that state. So the ruling party in the system is lucky. It manages to take a maximum number of seats. But given the current political context and what we've experienced with party officials being arrested or facing problems, getting even this number of seats shows that the party is still functioning. It'll come back as a winner. The non-final results made public by the National Voting Commission do, however, show a major defeat for the PDS. The current ruling coalition party scored a major victory, taking 119 of the 150 seats. The PDS made its worst showing in elections since 1978. When WAD started to become very unpopular, this could only have had a poor effect on the functioning of his party. And this is what happened, I think. 
Number two, his party appeared to have a strong support among political activists, but it ran into a wall based on the party patronage system. The activists flocked to the party because they benefited from the good jobs and positions that he handed out to supporters. Suddenly, Wad had very little to distribute to the activists as he lost power, so they simply abandoned him and joined forces with other politicians. Far from throwing in the towel, PDS officials said they were remobilizing the party rank and file. A party convention is scheduled before the end of the year. This will give party activists the time to choose a replacement for Abdullah Wad, who stood at the head of the party for 37 years. From the report on Senegal, we head straight to sports where Wembley finalists Andy Murray and Roger Federer have both said they are going to take a holiday before returning to London for the Olympic tennis tournament in a few weeks' time. Federer, who rewrote the sports history books yet again with his record equaling seventh Wembley title on Sunday. In the process of in the process, Strata, he wrecked Murray's dream of becoming the first men's winner from Britain for 76 years and something CNN's Becky Anderson asked Federer about, saying, did you regret it? Something is wrong with me. Bad. I didn't feel good about it and I was disappointed for Andy. Mm -hmm. And um, But I think his emotions were nice to see because it shows how dearly he cares about tennis and how much he would like to win a Grand Slam and that's why I think he's going to make it. But it, it did feel bad, you know, um, crashing maybe many people's dreams here in this country, but uh, I am convinced that Andy will win Grand Slams. Looking back, I'm, I'm happy. I w we were able, not just myself, were able to play such a great finals with Murray because there was so much on the line for both of us. A difficult day all around, you know, starting outdoors, finishing indoors, and then the occasion. So it was always going to finish in tears for either one of us, and uh, and it actually did for both of us. I was uh, very emotional as well, sharing the moment with with family and friends as well. You're just shy of your 31st birthday. Is 30 the new 20 these <laughs> days? I mean, how are you keeping so fit? Tennis experts tell me that you are playing some of the best tennis of your life and if you have a weakness in the past it might have been for example your drop shot you're even playing that well these days <laughs> no i mean things are going well for me and uh, uh, serena also won right and she's uh, 30 years old as well and even though with women you don't mention ages but <laughs> it's it's out there it's public but no it's true i mean we have actually the the third year olds are having a very good time because my generation of players were very very strong um, 10 years ago and, I, and, and to see Serena do so well as well I think is inspiring as well so it's, uh, it's good times and maybe it is the new 20 but I tell you I, when I turned 30 last year I told everyone I'm so happy I'm 30 and not 20 for some reason but uh, I, I, I might be mistaken it might be great to be 22. From sports we turn our attention to the weather news courtesy of the central forecast office. Sanctuary is committed to its inhabitants' needs without season. And as you travel along, all these values are replicated in one company, Elton. Just like the River Gambia leads in its commitment to values that matter most. Elton, championing the vision for a new generation. Good evening, and this is the weather news, beginning with a summary of today's weather, followed by the forecast. The day today was mainly very, very cloudy and warm across the country. Now our forecast, tonight we're expecting a cloudy atmosphere to prevail across the Gambia, and this will persist until tomorrow morning. The day tomorrow will be mainly partly cloudy and warm, but rain showers and thunderstorms will affect parts of the country, particularly during late afternoon. A light to moderate southwesterly breeze will continue to dominate the wind flow across the country. And the morning temperature values will be 22 degrees Celsius over Banjul and Yindam. We are expecting 23 degrees Celsius over Kerawan, Sibano, and Genoi. Elsewhere over the country will be mainly 24 degrees Celsius tomorrow morning. Top temperatures will be 30 degrees Celsius over Banjul. We are expecting 32 degrees Celsius over Yindam and Kerawan. Sibano and Genoi will record 33 degrees Celsius and elsewhere over the country will be either 34 or 35 degrees Celsius 
tomorrow afternoon. We are expecting low tides of 0.63 meters at 4 minutes past 5 o'clock in the morning and 